In this video, we're going to see how to connect a Shopify e-commerce store to your Brightpile account. Before we start, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Shopify integration with Brightpile. So as part of setup, we can import products into Brightpile, and we'll show you that at the end of this video. And then once you've actually turned on order synchronization, orders will be downloaded from Shopify into Brightpile. If a customer has paid for that order by credit card or PayPal, then we can create a sales receipt in Brightpearl, and that's a payment against the order. Any time the inventory is updated in Brightpearl, we push those stock levels back into Shopify, and that relies on both systems having the same SKU for a product. When the order is fulfilled and shipped in Brightpearl, we push the shipment back into Shopify, and Shopify will send the email to the customer. So what we don't do here is update Shopify prices, and we don't automatically create products on Shopify when you create them in Brightpearl. Similarly, if you edit a product in Brightpearl, maybe change the name or the description, we don't push those changes through to Shopify. Now let's have a look at how we connect up. So we have a few steps involved in this process. The first thing to do is add a sales channel into Brightpearl, and that's where we choose the price list for the channel and the warehouses that we synchronize inventory from. Then we need to go to the e-commerce connector dashboard, which is a separate screen, and there's where we link a Shopify store to the Brightpearl sales channel we've just created. Then we need to check the connector settings to make sure that inventory synchronization is turned off and order download is turned off and the relevant bank accounts have been set up. And then what we do, if we want to, is download Shopify products into Brightpearl. If the products already exist in Brightpearl, you don't need to do this. Then we add cost prices into Brightpearl and that's because Shopify doesn't have the concept of cost prices and cost prices is what you pay for the goods and is important for accounting and asset management. Then when your Brightpearl account has the correct inventory levels we'll push those inventory levels into your Shopify store and then finally we'll activate the order download and inventory sync so that Brightpearl is managing your Shopify store. So in the Brightpearl account let's add this Shopify channel. We go channels, manage channels and then we can just choose to add a channel and choose Shopify. This installs the integration and we give it a name. Let's call it Indo Retail. We choose a channel brand. This particular account has only got one channel brand, but if you had multiple Shopify stores, each store could have a different brand, which is different logos, email addresses, and so on. You can choose the warehouse you want to allocate orders from. So when an order is downloaded from Shopify, any available inventory in this warehouse is allocated to the order. And then finally, we want to choose which price list new contacts and new orders are created on. So whilst we don't manage prices on Shopify, the contact and order in Brightpearl does need a price list when it's created. And then add the channel. Now that we've added the channel, we need to go to the e-commerce connectors dashboard. Click this link here. Or in the future, if you need to go back to this page, then go to the e-commerce connector. On the left-hand side, click List Integrations, scroll down to Shopify, and click Settings. This is the Brightpearl e-commerce connector, and we'll log in using the same details we log into Brightpearl with. We're now on the e-commerce connector dashboard, and we haven't got any stores set up yet. So let's add a new store. This shows all the Shopify sales channels, and you can see here's the one we've just created in Brightpearl, and we'll choose to add our Shopify store. So I have a Shopify store, and let's go and have a quick look at that now to see where I get the URL from. Here's my demo store, indoretail.myshopify.com. Then if I go to the admin system, it's the same name slash admin. Now indo-retail is what I need to add into the e-commerce connector when setting up. So let's paste that in here and click Add Store. This will take you to your Shopify account where you need to authorize Brightpearl to access your store. Once you've authorized Brightpearl, you get taken back to the Brightpearl e-commerce connector where we can see that there's a store being added. The connection to Brightpearl API is OK and the connection to the Shopify store is OK. And note how inventory synchronization is off by default and order synchronization is off by default. Let's go into the settings screen where we can check the other values that we've got here. So we've got main warehouse for allocation and main warehouse for on-hand inventory 
and these are set up in Brightpile. And on the left hand side we can see that Brightpile is not yet managing inventory for this store, we're not yet downloading orders into Brightpile, and we're not creating sales receipts either. So when we want to turn the store on, we tick all these boxes. We can choose a bank account for sales receipts, and this is when a customer is paid by card. And if a customer is paid by PayPal, we can choose another Brightpile account here if we want to. So now that we've checked the settings, we can go back to the dashboard and we can actually download all of our Shopify products into Brightpile. If we go back to our Brightpile account, we'll see that there are no products in the system yet. And if I go across to my Shopify store, we'll see that we have a number of products here. These are the ones we're going to download automatically into my Brightpile account. And we do that from the e-commerce connector dashboard. On the right hand side, go to Action, Import Products. It shows you some settings on the right hand side which you can confirm or change in Brightpearl if you need to. It shows you which values in Shopify will match to which values in Brightpearl. We can choose whether to download all of our products or just the ones added since the last synchronization. And here let's choose all products. And we need to confirm that your Shopify products all have unique SKUs less than 32 characters long. So let's just spend a couple of seconds talking about these SKUs. So it's a stock keeping unit. Every Shopify product needs a SKU that matches one in Brightpearl. So that when you update stock levels in Brightpearl, we also update the same product in Shopify. And we do that by matching SKUs. In a similar way, when orders are downloaded from Shopify into Brightpearl, we need to make sure the right item is added to the order so that your warehouse team can ship it. And again, we do that by SKUs. And if a SKU already exists in Brightpearl when you're downloading from Shopify, that item will be skipped. It won't be updated or downloaded into Brightpearl again. So if you want to make sure that your Shopify store has got unique SKUs, now is the time before you download products into Brightpearl. If you're not sure, we have a Shopify data checker, which we can use to check your Shopify products. Once that's all done, we'll click Download Products. We can now see that it's currently synchronizing, and products will start to appear in our Brightpearl account. And here we can see the products starting to turn up. All the options, brands and values have been created automatically. So we've got colors, sizes, and if I drop into this product, we'll see that the product type of protection has been created from Shopify, the brands have been created from Shopify, the SKU's been brought in, everything's been placed into a, a category called Shopify products, the prices are being added to the relevant price list that you chose on the sales channel, and whether it's taxable or not for US stores is chosen also from Shopify. In the UK, that's a VAT code. So the next thing we need to do is make sure all of our products have got cost prices before we add the inventory. You can either do this one by one in the cost tab of the product itself, or you can upload price lists by spreadsheet, and there are separate videos to show you how to do price list updates. Then, once you've got your cost prices into Brightpearl, you need to upload inventory levels, or make sure your Brightpearl inventory levels are correct. When your Brightpearl inventory levels are right, then all you need to do is push that information back to your Shopify store to update your Shopify stock levels and we do that from the e-commerce connector dashboard. So going back to the e-commerce connector dashboard, we go to Action, Update Inventory Levels. All we need to do here is just hit Update Inventory Levels, and then all of your Shopify inventory levels will be updated to match your Brightpile inventory levels. And the speed at which this happens depends on how many products you've got. So Shopify only let us update about 50 products a minute, so if you have thousands of products it can take quite a few minutes. And the final thing to do is go back to your e-commerce connector dashboard, edit your settings, and turn on inventory management and order download. You probably also want to create sales receipts in Brightpearl for correct accounting. So just to review, the first thing we do is add a Shopify sales channel in Brightpearl. Then we go to the e-commerce connector dashboard, which is where we link the Shopify store to the Brightpearl sales channel. We then have a look at our connector settings to make sure everything looks OK before we download Shopify products into Brightpearl. We then add the cost prices into Brightpearl, update the store inventory levels from Brightpearl, and then activate order download and inventory sync. And that takes us to the end of the video that shows you how to connect your Shopify store to Brightpearl.